comfy seat, grab your warm coffee or tea, or maybe something a bit colder and stronger, and you are ready to relax for an hour and check out episode number 34 of the show right here on Shaw TV. Behind me right now, we've got a gentleman with a wonderful name in addition to a uh, great feel for music and a very cool instrument, the Charango. He'll be on that and some guitar later on. It's Mr. Matt Falvi, who plays in a number of bands in the area and runs a number of music projects as well. Andrew Roberts will give you the scoop later on this hour. Also on this show, kids, what do you want to wear when you go back to school? And parents, how the heck can you afford it on a budget? Well, we've got Jenny Woodell here from Value Village to let you know, or as I like to call the place, La W Boutique. All right, so in terms of also in school, we've got an education piece on tutoring with a twist from Kim Plumley. As we know, school is mostly about looking good, but there should be some learning going on there as well. Hello, nurse! Tara Keeping is here with a story on Nurses for Kids in the Nanaimo Society, a great new society there. And for the sporty out there, Brian Sugiyama is going to speak with athletic therapist Steve Van Schubert from Elite Performance. Not to be confused with my brief foray into sports medicine years ago entitled Mediocre Attempt. All right, for what is up with the Regional District of Nanaimo, stay tuned for Ian Holmes and his chat with the RDN Board Chair, Joe Stanhope, and food, food, food. We've got the scoop on an important upcoming Thanksgiving food drive, which as far as I'm concerned is a pretty good time for it because a Halloween food drive would be pretty really ridiculous and full of a lot of sugar and I guess Halloween sort of is a weird food drive to begin with. As well, we're going to probe down deep into the mysteries of coconuts. So we got that and more. So sip on that beverage, enjoy our coverage. It's Van Isle with a smile. It's the show, and it's right here on Shaw TV. I'm on a back to school kick this show. Uh, my kids are heading back and they're going to grade three and six this year and it's pretty exciting, but uh, it's a little wearing on my budget. So we have Jenny Waddell here today and she's going to talk a little bit about school fashions, back to school fashions on a budget. And she is from Value Village here in Nanaimo. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how to dress for less and impress. Welcome Jenny. Hi, thank you. Well, I'm so excited you're here. Well, we're gonna head right into here because we're gonna go into our fashion show and we have lovely Kenzie. <laughs> And she is wearing a great outfit. Can you tell me a little bit about this outfit? Um, she's just wearing a pair of jeans with a little bit of embroidery on the back. And as far as I'm concerned, a pretty awesome t-shirt. So. so you're a Bieber girl, hey? Yeah, Alrighty. I wish they had one of myself. Alrighty. <laughs> uh, what are some of the trends for uh, kids these days? Um, the 80s has really come back. Yes. A lot of neons, bright colors uh, for the top and the bottom. Uh, a lot of florals this year too. Awesome. So. Thank you so much, Kenzie. You're awesome. And now we've got our young man, Noah, here. Hi, Noah. Um, he is our rock star wannabe. I think he's going to be awesome. What are some of the trends for boys? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> um, boys, again, are into colors. Uh, the one thing uh, at this age is that they start to get their own fashion sense. Mm -hmm. So they start taking different pieces and putting them together like his hat. He looks awesome. Noah, you're a very awesome. Thanks for coming out. So now we've got uh, Zola, lovely Zola and Gracie. And these two, they tend to march to their own drummers. Uh, how do you work a sense of style into some of these kids on a budget? Uh, I would suggest bringing them with you. Okay. Getting them to pick out a couple, couple different pieces that they want, maybe giving them a budget of what they need to spend. Uh, these types of girls are normally able to take one piece and turn it into 14 different outfits. Yeah, these two are quite the little rock stars. Okay, smile there's Zola, honey. There's my girl. Um, so, um, so we got that. Now we're going to go and we're going to talk a little bit about Ella Rose and Cheyenne. Now these two, Ella, uh, hi girls. Um, the little blondie's mind, cutie, eh? Anyway, uh, these two are trying to figure out how to transition from shorts to school gear. What tips do we have for these kids? Uh, you definitely want to make it lightweight and comfortable material. Uh, make sure that they can go from the school to the play yard yeah. really easily. So girls, all you guys look great, and I love the outfits that you chose. Those are fantastic. Now, our sixth little guy, this is Caleb. Caleb, he is adorable. Hi, Caleb. He is heading into kindergarten. <laughs> He's so cute. They're a little more so independent cute. and they're trying to figure out what they like. What are some of the good basics for kindergarten kids? Um, definitely stuff that you can mix and match, right? At this age, they're getting into their own creativity and a lot of times using role models um, of style that they like. But I would definitely get a couple pieces that you can mix and match. Hi, Kayla. Do you want to say hi to the camera? 
<laughs> oh, you're just adorable, little man. Now, we also, we, we talked a little, we were trying to get some teens and stuff and trying to figure that all out, but we ended up finding a, a lovely gentleman who's heading back to school, okay. heading back to college, and our kid, Rick, um, is heading back to VIU. So, Caleb, you want to go, you can go. Thanks, honey. Thanks, honey. Go see your mama. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rick. He's going to do a little Zoolander for you, I think, today. <laughs> That's our boy. Um, now, Rick, he has not been back to school for a long time, so he's heading to VIU. You can turn around there, buddy, and give us a look. <laughs> Rick has been on the show before, doing a little bit of tying and stuff, and he's going back to school for aqua fish things. I don't know. <laughs> um, so what do older adults need when they're going back to school? Uh, with something definitely that you're comfortable in, you probably haven't sat in a class in a really long time, and you do not want to be worrying about how your clothes are fitting when you're trying to get learning again so I would definitely go with comfort <laughs> okay awesome so that's great thank you Rick very much so we know that we can buy lots of great things from Value mm -hmm. Village what are some of the tips that people can get for school clothes um, what are other ideas that we can do to save money um, Nanaimo is filled with lots of different thrift stores and they all have different varieties you just want to make sure that you have enough time Right, to be able to find all the treasures that you're looking for. So you guys also have, you know, there's jeans, there's shirts, there's shoes, we backpacks. Backpacks, shoes, uh, we sell men's, ladies, kids, infants, toddlers, uh, we sell everything. Everything in the kitchen sink. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I've seen a kitchen we sink do or two there. Yeah. Every once in a while. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate the effort that you've taken in giving those kids, pick the outfits for these children um, and making it happen. The price points are really good there. Like. You can get an outfit, I think, for what was under 12 bucks? You can get some under $12. It really depends on what you're looking for, right? Based on the, sometimes the brand does take effect, but you definitely okay, can get yeah. lots of good finds. We do find some good brands there. Oh, we yeah, yes, all the absolutely. Time. So lots of great things. So this is the Nanaimo location. Um, these clothes will be on sale there as well. Um, lots of other great opportunities. You and your staff are amazing. We'll help anybody, right? Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. absolutely. <laughs> um, and there's also some other great thrift stores out there. So the SOS, Haven Thrift Store, much more. Also really maybe talk to some of your friends about trading. If you have a kid who's 10 and that someone else has an eight year old, do a little bit of trading and see who people want to do that as well. Um, lots of great things. Any other tips that we can look for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So we're going to have a lot of more fun. We're going to talk a little bit more about kid-friendly activities, and we're going to head over to Tara and talk about nurses for kids. Thanks, Kim. Here with me in the studio, we have Nurses for Kids in Nanaimo. We have Joe Lindia, who is the president, and we have Mark Artlight, which is a board member. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, I want to hear about the story because we all like stories and how your organization, which is a new organization just this year, it got started over a Canucks hockey game. So tell us about how that started and how the story of your new organization. Um, thanks, Sarah. Uh, we can rewind to uh, 2011 where myself and a couple of colleagues at work, also nurses, uh, we just felt like doing something different, something that hadn't been done in Nanaimo. So we contacted the Canucks alumni. Mm -hmm. um, so we had the likes of uh, Wayne Van Dorp and uh, um, Chris Odlifson. Uh, we had uh, the voice of the Canucks, uh, Mr. Ashbridge in and the house. That's a big voice. Yeah. And um, they, the, we, we figured at the beginning was just ask. The worst we're going to get is a no. Uh, but they said yes. And they came and we had a great day. Uh, we, uh, we spoiled three kids because we had a little contest. and. Uh, that was a success, and from there we uh, just evolved into Nurses for Kids, and uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge that we've undertaken, myself, Mark, and other colleagues at the hospital, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, the future and what it brings. And so, let's be clear with this organization, it is a, a, a registered not-for-profit and what it is is all uh, nurses, care aides from the Nanaimo Hospital just because of this hockey game, God, decided let's have this organization. So it's all the money that is raised that would go for education, for bursaries, for um, kids that want to get into the healthcare field. Is that correct? That's correct. The intent is to raise, hopefully long term, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, long term meaning, you know, hopefully the society lives a long time. Um, short term, yeah, we hope to raise some money for some bursaries, help some of these uh, uh, high school graduates that are going into uh, university mm -hmm. for medical, not necessarily doctors and nurses, could be uh, lab technicians, oh, okay. could be uh, veterinary, it's medicine, 
as long as uh, you know they they have good grades in biology. Mm -hmm. They're graduating grade 12 and they've taken biology and uh, and they, they move forward. There's too many times where you hear that kids back away because they just can't afford something. Yes. And then we lose a good tech or a good doctor or a good nurse. And we, try, we want to try and prevent that. And how did you get involved with the organization, Mark? I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you a question too. <laughs> <laughs> I met Joe uh, at work one day and uh, we found out that we actually knew each other about 20 years ago back in uh, Ottawa and then he was talking about hockey and one thing led to the other okay. and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to play in the uh, game with the Montreal Canadiens alumni. And yes, and that was last March. Yeah. Wow, you do a lot of events. As an event planner, I'm like, wow, the type of events you had. You had the uh, uh, past uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, hockey players that came out last March. Yeah, Guy Lafleur was in the house. Wow. Uh, Steph Stefan Richer was in town. Uh, they brought uh, ten of their a uh, <laughs> top players, and uh, we had a we had a turnout. Uh, the focus about nurses for kids is um, it's not so much just the bursaries; it's also the events we have, with the exception of one that's hopefully coming up in November. Um, it. Uh, we want to involve the kids. Yes. So like we had that those three kids that had a treat in the first uh, game. Well, this past March, we had 16 players on the ice skating with the Montreal Canadiens. Wow. And we're running out of time here. Can you tell us about the upcoming event quickly on November 10th? It's scheduled for November 10th at the Coast Bastion. And uh, it's a casino night. Um, all the details still being um, finalized. And hopefully, we'll be able to publicize it by the end of the week. Uh, with regards to price points and whatnot. So we've got a casino night coming up in November. We've got the Canucks alumni. Monte Carlo by the Harbor is the name of that Correct. event, folks. And uh, the Canucks alumni have confirmed just yesterday wow. that they are coming back in February. And so if anyone wants more information, it's www.nursesforkidsnanaimo.com. Correct. Great. With the number four. With the number four. Yes, the number four. Thank you so much for being on, on the show, and I wish you so much success with the upcoming events. Thank you. So now we're going to go back to our fun Matt Carter. All right. So please send 27 large pepperoni pizzas to Mr. Todd Jones, Maple Leafs. Oh, oh sorry. How we were back. That's right. All right. One of the best things about being in autumn is that it's harvest season, of course, and in the Thanksgiving spirit, Vancouver Island hosts a number of uh, harvest and food-related events and fundraisers. Let's tell you about two of them right about now. First up, in Nanaimo on Saturday, September 15th, is the second annual Nanaimo Harvest Festival, a festival that celebrates all things culinary, except maybe not the colorful language that I've heard in professional kitchens over the years. So you can check out some uh, amazing educational displays and interactive presentations involving sustainability, food security, urban agriculture, organic local food sources, edible wild foods, and the culinary arts. But of course, there is also food there for you to try. There will be a top chef competition with samples available for you to buy because, well, you are hungry after all. As well as the kids area, there's a petting farm, live entertainment, and more. So check it out. It's the second annual Nanaimo Harvest Festival. That's taking place in the Old City Quarter on Saturday, September 15th from 10.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon and admission for that one is free. And the very, very next day right down the road in Duncan, it's the Vancouver Island Feast of Fields 2012. And this was a four-hour wandering harvest festival where you can wander around a farm with glass in hand and cracking some of your favorite lines from the Beverly Hillbillies and trying the best of BC from chefs, farmers, fishers, ranchers, and my favorite, vintners and brewers, and many, many more. The overall aim of the society and of the event is to highlight the connection between farmer and chef, field and table, and farm folks and city folks. And with this event, they do a pretty darn uh, good time while doing so. So once again, that's the Vancouver Island Feast of Fields 2012, held at the Alderley Farm and Cafe in Duncan. And that's taking place on Sunday, September 16th, from 1 in the afternoon until 5 in the evening. Check out their website, feastoffields.com, for more information on how you can get tickets. All right, now I'm going to throw things over to my man, Brian Sugiyama, for his chat with athletic therapist Steve Van Schubert. Brian, over to you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we're here with Steve Van Schubert from Elite Performance athletic therapy and we're going to talk about some of the injuries the weekend warriors face and people who work out very casually and don't do all the things right so Steve can you start me in on some things here definitely yeah that population ends up being most of the population unfortunately um, so a lot of the injuries that we will see in the clinic are for people that as you said don't do a whole lot for maybe the the winter and then 
head out right away and start sprinting around the, the baseball diamond. So we see a lot of people that are not prepared strength-wise, endurance-wise, and maybe they have some muscle imbalances. So uh, one of the, the first things that we think of, that we hear about a lot in the media is core training, core okay. strength and core stability. So let's just start you off with one idea of how we can teach you how to set the core which is basically the way that we're going to stabilize our spine and keep our posture good and, and when we're doing exercises, keep us in a proper alignment. So if I can get you to Great. lie on your back sure. for me there, Brian. So there's lots of tricks and ways to teach people to set the core. Lots of them are great. We'll just try one fun one today for you. It may be a little unorthodox, but we'll give it a shot. All right. So what I would like you to try and do is, you're going to feel what happens in your stomach muscles when you cough. So go ahead and cough for me. <coughs> you feel okay. all those muscles tighten up yeah. a little bit. So what I'd like you to try and do is cough again, but hold that muscle contraction after you finish coughing. All right. <coughs> okay, I'll hold that and continue just to try and breathe normally. That's a trick okay. in and of itself sometimes. So if you can handle that, yeah. you got that? Yeah. All right. So now try and keep that abdominal bracing, we'll call okay. it, while you lift your pelvis off the ground. Good. And then set back down again. If you lose the bracing, you just reset again, tighten okay. it back up again, and continue. All right. All right. So this is our way we teach people Good. how to set the core, basically. All right. Abdominal bracing. So let's add a little strength challenge for you. Once, okay. you've, once you've mastered the art of abdominal bracing, we can add a strength component to you. So we're going to do the exact same routine. Okay. So brace the abdominals, continue breathing, and you're going to lift your pelvis up nice and high. And we're okay. adding a strength component. The ball's a little unstable, so you've got some work to do, right? Right. Okay. Set your pelvis back down again. We'll do another rep. This time when you're up high, you're going to bring your, your heels in towards your pelvis. Okay. There you go. Now we're adding in some hamstring work. Okay. So we're getting more complicated, adding more things. Good. And down you go. As long as you're able to maintain that control of that bracing. That's what we're okay. shooting for. All right. Okay. Let's get you off the ground because that's not the most functional position in the world for people who do right. sports. So one of the major exercises we do standing with people is to do squats. I'll just roll that out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to do a couple of squats for me. All we'll right. Just, maybe we'll pick on you just a little bit, but okay. we'll see. Maybe you're perfect. All right. Good. Excellent. Okay. Do one more rep for me. Okay. And I can see that your shoulders are coming forwards just a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's one of the really common things. So um, there's ways to correct that. We want people to be a little bit more upright. We don't want to be playing sports and doing activities with our head between our knees. Okay. Right. So one way that we can do is to give you just a 10 pound dumbbell here. It doesn't have okay. to be super heavy. Hold okay. it in about chin height. And go ahead and pretend, here, I'll even put a ball behind you. Try and just touch yourself onto that chair or that ball, and you're sitting that pelvis behind okay. you. Okay. All right? The weight you're doing perfectly is a counterweight to stop you from falling over backwards, which a lot of people that haven't done a lot of squats like yourself will feel like their weight is shifting backwards and they may want to fall over. Now we can see your back is nice and upright. Great. All right. Awesome. Perfect. You're doing great with those. So take that for you. So the other part, uh, other than muscular strength and muscular endurance that we see when we look at people with muscle imbalance is some of them are too strong and they're too tight and they're wound up. So we do need to get people to stretch a little bit. Not always the most popular option for people for some reason, but I'm going to show you two quick stretches that can really help with your spinal stability and your posture. When should you do these stretches? Ooh, great question. Um, traditionally speaking, you should be doing a great warm up, which should take at least 15 minutes to get a really good warm up. And when you do the warm up, you're doing some kind of dynamic stretching. This type of stretch is our post exercise stretch, we call it static stretching. And these are the stretches that you're going to hold for 30 seconds at a time and repeat three times. Okay. okay. So this is post workout. So I'm going to put the ball here for you. If you just want to hang on to that with one hand. Okay. We'll get you into a kneeling position like this. All right. So we want a nice straight and tall line here. Engage your abdominal bracing just a little bit. And you're going to shift your pelvis forwards into a little bit of a lunge. Okay. And you can even move this foot a little farther forward. All right. Okay. We're looking to get a stretch somewhere in the quads and hip flexors. You feel something there? Yes. Good. Okay. So I can again, feel that in right in front of my leg. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So that would be something that you would again hold for 30 seconds or okay. so. Okay. All right. The other one we can try is to get you onto both knees. We'll put this hand, free hand, on the ground. Okay. Good. And you're going to really reach that ball forwards into the left a little bit as you sit your, your butt back onto your heels. Okay. So what we're doing with this reach is we're really trying to stretch out this big muscle group, your lats that come all the way down into your low back. All right. So even though it's uh, largely a shoulder muscle, people think of it as working this area, it really has an effect on your lower spine. So I have a lot of issues with lower back stiffness, yeah. so this would help. 
Definitely, yeah. So, you know, that's the one thing is that a lot of the exercises that you'll see prescribed or you'll see in the media or maybe on YouTube if you do a search, uh, you'll see a lot of great exercises. So finding out which is the right one for you specifically, whether your lats are an issue or whether your hip flexors are an issue or whether it's something else, that's where you really need to get an assessment done. Good. And the assessment comes through you at Elite Performance? Yeah, we do all kinds of musculoskeletal assessments there. Um, we see athletes, but we also see the weekend warriors for sure. Okay, what's that? Just as a last point, give us your website that they can look up all the services you have. Sure, yeah, our website is www.eliteperformance.ca. Thanks a lot, Steve Van Schubert. Thanks, man. And we'll head back to Matt, the musician. There's two Matts here, and for a little bit more music. Mr. Matthew Favai, my man. Where's the, where's the low five? Don't leave me hanging. Beautifully done. All right, he plays in bands. He runs community jams. He cooks big tams. I don't know. And actually, long-term residents of Parksville right and recognize the last name, the Favai name, as being associated with Favai's music, a long-time music store run by Matthew's grandfather. And now the, the younger Favai, you can often see him down in Nanaimo performing at uh, many events, including running events at the Courts Pub, the Corner Lounge, the Queens, and many, many more. Again, the song you just heard was called Talking With You, and later this hour, Matt will be talking with intrepid music journalist Andrew Roberts, who incidentally is also the secret weapon in the uh, ongoing discussions between the NHL and the NHLPA CBA talks, OMG, LOL. But next up on the show, we're going to have a conversation with Joe Stanhope, the board chair of the Regional District of Nanaimo, and particularly keying on issues of public transportation. So with that, we're going to send it over to the one, the only, Ian Holmes. Ian, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. Yes, as you mentioned, joined by Joe Stanhope. And public transportation, it's an issue. It's a lightning rod of criticism uh, throughout the Mid-Vancouver Island region. And talk a little bit about it. Uh, Joe has joined us. And Joe, uh, some recent uh, news making headlines is the fact that an independent review uh, being conducted with 18 recommendations into BC Transit, as I understand, 
regional district in Nanaimo not very happy with the way that officials with BC Transit were, were, were treating local transit operators. So what, what exactly, what's the impact? What does this mean for, uh, for public transportation here locally, Joe? Well, Ian, we, uh, we had some problems. Uh, we weren't being treated as a true partner with BC Transit, and we are because basically we're, we're paying for most of the 58% of the cost of these things, whereas BC Transit are paying about 42%. They, uh, they had the nice Nova buses they gave to us, and we had a big celebration, a big uh, announcement, and uh, there were 13 Nova buses, and we ran them for a while. They were very fuel efficient, very cost effective buses. The people in our community really liked them. And guess what? BC Transit said, we'll want them all back again. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. So we, they would have left us with the oldest fleet of flyer buses, higher cost to operate, uh, and, you know, not as neat. Uh, as you just look outside the building here, the Nova buses are going back and forth. So I refused to send them back. And uh, this started the ball rolling. Uh, there were other issues. They, uh, uh, BC Transit uh, gave, doubled their uh, management fees after we had adopted our budget in 2010. So I asked for a meeting with the minister. Um, and from that, I ha held meetings with 58 other local governments. And then I chaired a meeting with these 58 representatives from 58 other local governments with uh, Minister Lekstrom. He listened to us and he agreed to, uh, um, to have this, uh, this uh, review panel, a three-person three review panel. And of course, here it is. It's, uh, it's uh, nice and glossy and uh, has got some very meaningful recommendations in it. And uh, we hope that this is going to improve our system. Right, and uh, the title, Modernizing the Partnership, and just expand a little bit on that as the report touches on governance, decision-making, and accountability from BC Transit working in concert with uh, local transit operators. So if this all comes to fruition, there's the 18 recommendations and the Transportation Minister Blair Lextrom saying in about a month's time there will be a formal answer to this. Ultimately, what would you like to see? Uh, what could this mean if, if uh, let's, let's say, a lion's share of these recommendations get, uh, get followed through on? Well, I think that we, we should have better representation on the board, and this is one of the recommendations that uh, may take some legislative changes, but I think there should be, uh, there should be some representation from, uh, from local governments, more than there is right now, on that board. And uh, this is one of the big, big things. So it's a partnership, but we weren't tre being treated like a partnership. Because of this, uh, has identified this uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, review. They s they state yes, it wasn't being treated like a partnership, like it truly should be. So yeah, the governance, the accountability, um, all of that thing. We're part of the process, and we've got to be part of the decision making process. Mm -hmm. It can't be just made by the BC Transit in Victoria telling us what they're going to do. That's that doesn't fit. Just expand a little bit uh, more. You mentioned that the 13 Nova buses. Uh, that the BC Transit wanted back. Those are 500 grand a piece. They're, uh, electric, they're very fuel efficient. These are very important. There's 43 buses in total in the network. So that's a, about a quarter, essentially, of the bus network here locally. Joe, uh, that's an example. But uh, what else happened that kind of maybe rubbed you the wrong way in terms of the way that, uh, that, um, well, that you felt that uh, you were mistreated? I sent my accountant down there to find out truly what was the problem. Of course, they said it was due to HST and uh, Tilma. Uh, we found out that that wasn't so. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there were a lot of problems. So we, we need to be in on the decision making because it's us, the taxpayers in the regional district in Anamwa that have to pay the, these costs. If the cost would have been higher if we'd been faced with these old flyer buses. The maintenance costs are higher, the, the operating costs are higher. So yeah, we want to be treated like a partner. The, and we are a partner. And so um, this identifies, this say, these uh, uh, recommendations identify that loud and clear. And we'll see uh, what happens with those uh, recommendations. Um, Joe, moving on to uh, a constant uh, complaint people have with public transportation, primarily uh, in the city of Nanaimo, is the fact that the, the service uh, sucks. It's not, the, not very efficient, but there's challenges based uh, you know, largely in part to you don't have the population to get the kind of service you want, like Metro Vancouver, for example. How do you ca counteract that argument and try to improve transportation and, uh, and try to boost ridership a little bit more? Well, that's our, our, our objective in, by 2010 is to double our ridership. We've had over 2.6 2 million riders last year. Um, we have a, a transit uh, committee uh, and uh, some, of these ideas, some of these problems that you've identified 
they're raised at that meeting. We're trying to make it better. We would love to see the UPASS, where, where it would be part and parcel at the uh, Vancouver Island University. That would be a key thing. Um, we're, we're doubling uh, a lot of the ridership. We're, we hear where some of the problems are. We try to identify those. We, as you know, we're a very long um, uh, regional district. Uh, we, we have to cover all the way to Bowser now, um, which, is, which is huge. So, but our main focus of our, our bus fleet, 95%, 90 to 95% of our buses are operating within the greater, what we call greater Nanaimo, uh, not the regional district. But so that's, uh, that's very key. And uh, you know, we're trying to make it better because let's face it, populations are getting older. Uh, we could have a spike in fuel costs, then people would, uh, would, would come to our buses. So we have to make them effective. Anything that we can do to make it uh, more uh, uh, reasonable, more effective, and uh, user-friendly, that's, that's our objective. And how do you make that happen, Joe? You, you want to double uh, ridership. That's about 5 million uh, individual rides annually a year by the year of 2020. Quite the lofty goal. You got to make it a favorable service to get people on to maybe ditch their vehicles. How realistically do you make that happen? It looks like a pretty tall order. So it's got to be something that people want and some, something that people are going to use. So that's how we're going to do it. Uh, you can see the, the bus shelters that we've made. Uh, um, once again, um, there's all kinds of things that we're doing to try and make it so we can identify when the next bus is coming by. Uh, so people, um, people can uh, get used to it and know that it's going to work for them, and let's face it, they're, they're, uh, it has to be user-friendly in order for us to double the uh, ridership, and that's our objective. It does sound like it's uh, you know, in concert with the city of Nanaimo, they're doing a master transportation plan. This is something uh, I've heard a lot more the past couple of years as maybe a few years before, so it sounds like you know, pe people are rowing their boat in the same direction. Local government entities, uh, public transportation seems to be a priority. Yeah, well, that's it. The, the Nanaimo is doing this uh, master plan, and that, and that includes buses, cars, bicycles, pedestrians, you name it, and probably the Island Corridor Foundation as well. But we also have our, our uh, regional district transit plan and, as well, and that's trying to fit into this master plan. Nanaimo is a key thing. And let's face it, one of the things that we'll we're have to look at is, is a, a, a major uh, a, a bus transit uh, area where, and we're working on that with the city of Nanaimo. Hopefully that'll come uh, very soon. We'll be able to make some announcement on that, but that's another issue. All right, lots of challenges, but it sounds like lots are happening behind the scenes. Joe, uh, thanks for coming on, I really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks for your time. And Joe Stanhope, Chair of the Regional District of Nanaimo, talking transportation. More on the show after this break. That short video you just witnessed, it tells a really, really great story about the hunger issue that's going on right here in Nanaimo. And we've got a great project that we want to talk to you about today. And joining me today is Bob DeLerma, who's the food chairman for the uh, Latter-day Saints Church here in Nanaimo. And also joining him is Mike Cato from Quality Foods. Bob and Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. Glad to have you here. The great project we're working on, I can tell. And it's exciting, too. Tell us what it is that you're going to be doing. Well, we're going to be passing out bags throughout the city. And uh, they'll be just like this one here. And we'll just drop them off at the doorstep. And then uh, we'll do that on the Monday and Tuesday. And then on uh, Saturday, we will be coming back and picking them up. Uh, we will not be knocking on the doors. Uh, we will not be asking for cash donation or picking, receiving cash. If you want to do a cash donation, direct it to Loaves and Fishes. And this started some time back in Alberta. T briefly tell us that if you would too, Bob. It started uh, back in 97 by a fellow named Jeffrey Jacob. Uh, he wanted to help the hungry in Calgary. And uh, by 2005, every standing resident in Calgary was donated, got a bag. Got a bag yeah. yeah. And then by 2008, they set a world record of uh, collecting $1 million worth of food in wow. one day. That's incredible. So Bob, or uh, Mike, sorry, uh, tell us what Quality Foods is doing to support this program. Um, what, what we'll be doing is we're, we're going to be donating the bags that will be dropped off at people's doorsteps. We're donating over 10,000 bags in the Nanaimo area. Um, we'll also be launching our uh, buy a bag program in the stores, in the quality food stores, where a customer will be able to pick up a bag and drop it off for the food bank, for the loaves and fishes. 
in our stores. Um, big job, big job. So uh, 10,000 bags, that's a lot of bags to distribute. How are you going to get those out, Bob? We have approximately 200 volunteers wow. um, from our church, uh, from the community, and uh, Quality Foods, Good they nice. have uh, three teams also. Good. And uh, we're going to pass them out. So then back on September, on Saturday, September the 15th, to pick those bags up. Hopefully they're all full. Hopefully 10, they are full. full bags. Yes. And how, how much are we going to get if we get 10,000 full bags? What are we hoping to get there, Bob? If we get 10,000 bags full, we're looking at probably around 50 to 60,000 pounds of food. Wow. It's a lot. Last year we received 16,000, just over 16,000 pounds, worth about $27,000. That's incredible. So we're actually, we're looking to double it this year, you're hoping for? Just over double, yes. Just over double, yeah. that's great. So, and, and this all goes to? Loaves and fishes here Loaves in Nanaimo. It stays in the community. Uh, this is done all over BC. There's 50 commu communities doing it, and it goes to your local food bank. So, as well as the other uh, Latter-day Saints churches here in Nanaimo are very involved, but what about on the pro here in the island? Well, I mean, there are a lot of them involved there as well? Yes, it's uh, throughout the island. We have uh, Duncan, Port Alberni, Campbell River, Courtney, all throughout. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. Last year we raised uh, 73,000 pounds of food, worth about $200,000. That's on incredible. the island. And it all ends up going in those hungry tummies. It does, yes. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Bob and Mike, thank you so much for coming today. I know that it's really brief. Uh, we've gone through this really, really quickly, but I know Nanaimo, look for those bags on your door, on your handle, on September 10 and 11, and they'll be picked up on the 15th. And I know they're going to be full, and you're going to have a, a big job toting those bags away. Certainly, yeah, that's great. So now, let's go over to see what Matt with a T, single T, has got up his sleeve for music, and let's see what Andrew's gonna do with them. Andrew, over to you. Good, thanks, th thanks so much, Bob. I'm here with Matt Falvi, who uh, you can see downtown at like two to three different venues a night, probably at the same time. You know, he's, he's just that much out there, so thanks for being on the show, Matt. Love to be here, Andrew. Awesome. So. You're working, you, you've been in, involved in the Nanaimo music scene for at least over eight years. Um, tell me some of the projects that you've been working on and that you're, you've got coming up. Actually, I probably started about eight years ago with you. And I ended up taking a big break. Uh, just didn't play music at all. And I traveled around and came back to Nanaimo and tried to uh, want to try the musician thing. And I found that a town that I tried to run away from my whole life, thought it was too small, wanted to live in London and the States and Victoria. Actually had a really amazing downtown community scene and uh, getting started there with all the jams and meeting all the great musicians and talent that we have here. People that are just like world-class talent and are bored and on their nights off will come down and play for people. So I started getting involved with that and then found that I uh, got in a position where I would host a lot of these jams. So like this week, for example, Monday at the Queens, we had a jam. Tuesday at the Corner Lounge, which is great. Wednesday at the Courts, that's an eight-year jam that uh, used to be Tanya's Red Martini Room. So we moved that over to the Courts, and uh, there's jams all over town, so. It's crazy. Yeah, you're a busy guy. Yes, very. <laughs> oh yeah, and then on Saturdays, uh, we do live original music at the Courts pub. So now you host, you promote, you book, and you perform at the Courts Pub. So that's mm -hmm. you know, a man of many hats. Um, what is it like on the other side when you're promoting and you're booking other than being a musician? Like, how do you find that other side of the business? You know, uh, I, I never thought I would actually do it. I originally started doing it just to find a place for my band to play. There wasn't really a lot of original music being played on the weekends in Anaimo anymore. There was a lot of jukebox bands and just DJs, so nothing against them, but I wanted a place to play, so I approached the Courts. And we started there, and you can't have your band play every single weekend. So I started talking to a lot of other bands. We've worked with uh, I of Odin, A uh, Thousand Burning Suns, Kill Matilda is a great Vancouver band, Paisley Eye. And I found that uh, uh, I really enjoy it. I like, I like putting out the fires. I like uh, finding out why this band is having a problem with the management at a place and coming to terms and uh, sort of fixing the problems. Great. Kind of like the sheriff. Yeah, I work with kids a lot, yeah. so it prepared me. Nice. 
Yeah, adults are worse. Do you ever think about teaching? Yeah, teaching something I always wanted to get into. I, I kind of learned guitar off of like YouTube and a Beatles book, so I always feel a little dishonest taking money for a guitar lesson. I'm not inventing how to play guitar. It's, it's all there, but some people want, I, I guess, a bit of guidance. Right. And you've yeah. got a new album coming out? You're yeah, working on that? I'm working on two albums right now. I'm doing an acoustic, acoustic-ish, softer, original side of the stuff that I'll be playing today and already did play. That's with Ed Lee at Broken Spiral Studios. And then I have a, a full rock band, and we're recording with Rick Salt, who's like an Nanaimo legend. Excellent. And yeah. So if you want to find out more about Matt Falavi, you can check him out on Reverb Nation, and that's uh, ReverbNation.com slash Matthew Falavi, and that's M-A-T-H-E-W-F-A-L-V-A-I. Um, thanks so much for being on the show, Matt. And uh, yeah, you're going to play a song called Just Someone New? Just, someone just something, new. just someone new. Just someone new. Take it away, thanks. times when I did this right but now it's over you played by the rules I left you a fool you didn't need it we woke from a dream just now to see this was the end I remember the times When we did this right And now it's over You're just someone new And soon you'll fall like the rain Just someone new And soon You'll fall like the rain Yeah, I don't know what to do
that was so good. Matt, it was awesome. I'm very excited to have heard that song. So um, I am now on a back to school theme today. Um, this episode of the show is all about back to school for me. Now the kids are going back. We're going to get to school. We're looking at our schedules, pack lunches, and some of us tutoring. And today I am joined by Amber Scotchburn, and she's with Tutoring with a Twist. Welcome, Amber. Thank you, Kim. I'm excited to have you here. So Tutoring with a Twist, what's the twist? Um, the twist is that we reach each child that comes to us um, exactly where they're at. Okay. So we don't have an approach that we would just take out of a box to use. We make a program for each child that comes in. Ah, very personal. I love that. Now, how did you get started in the tutoring business? Um, I was a teacher in Ontario for 12 years before I moved to the island um, and was recognized for my expertise in working with at-risk and special needs children that were disengaged with school um, and ended up running a program in, for kids that had dropped out in grade 12 um, and re-engaged them in school and their graduation rates went up. Oh, good for you. So what ages do you work with here, uh, kids on the island? What kind of kids' ages do you, I don't even know what I'm saying. What, what ages are you working with with kids? Um, well, our, ages, our youngest age has been five and our oldest has been 70-ish. Um, yes. Good. So. Good. That's great. So what area of the islands uh, are you going to with your tutors? Um, currently we're in Duncan, Nanaimo, Lanceville, Nanus, Qualicum and Parksville. Okay. Um, and in about four weeks, uh, fingers crossed, we're launching in Comox, Courtney and Campbell River. Wow, that's a great outreach. How many tutors do you have floating around here? Um, we currently have seven and um, I'm in the process of interviewing for the other regions I just mentioned. Good. And what are the benefits of having a tutor for your child? Um, increased confidence, um, motivation, um, and just re-engaging, as I mentioned before, their passion for learning. That's what many of our parent, us parents want for our children. Um, what are some of the things that you can share with us about how to find the right tutor for your child? You know how to do that, right? right. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd call tutoring with a twist <laughs> and we'd find the right tutor. Um, no, the things that we look for are definitely a rapport. Um, so somebody who's going to be personable and, and warm. And for each child that comes in, that could look different. It could be somebody who's really chatty like me or a child might need somebody who's a little bit quieter. So rapport is definitely. Um, and then there's just things that are standard like qualifications, criminal reference checks, um, those would be givens. Um, and then I think one thing that we offer that's quite different is we're like tutoring taxis. So we go to where you're at, sometimes even actually going to a child's extracurricular activity so that we're not adding anything on to a parent's already hectic schedule. You are awesome. <laughs> that is a big help. So what is the focus of, that you have for this new year? You're telling me something very exciting that you're working on. Um, well, one of the factors that kids um, can't access tutoring is money. It's, it's expensive. Um, and so we um, are doing our best to start a scholarship fund this year, for a Tutoring with a Twist scholarship fund. So if I do get a call and there is a need presented either from a school, an agency, or a parent, that we already have funds put aside so that we can just automatically fit them into where it's going to work in their schedule. Oh, you make me so happy. That is a very important thing that we can do for, hopefully for all our kids and we can make that happen. And I thank you so much. This is a huge benefit for families and kids and all that. We want the best for our kids and we want them to be strong and confident. That's the key, right? That's how we won. I thank you for being here. And one of the new confident people that we have uh, on uh, hosting today is our lovely Lorraine Jensen. And she's going a little nutty today with coconut. Welcome, Ben. I'm so excited to have you here, Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, we are going coconutty today. It is my uh, extreme pleasure to um, welcome Donna Jack to the show. And Donna is a raw certified chef certified raw food chef certified raw food chef and yes. she ha owns the company love my health today love my health today welcome donna thank you very much lorraine i appreciate being here as your first guest oh thank you so one of the things like there are so many new foods out there on the market and i want you to talk about one of them today and that one of course is coconuts so i want you to talk to us about coconut water coconut oil and coconut meat yes there is meat in a coconut. So this is a young coconut, and um, inside the coconut is the water. So it's a liquid form. It looks just like this. And a couple of the benefits of the coconut water 
is um, good for hydration and it's also super good for restoring electrolytes. So if you're a hardcore worker outer, you could definitely benefit from drinking this. The other benefit is, is it's excellent for weight loss. Mm. The more you drink of it, the more water that passes through you, the Keep better talking. your cells are going. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna try that out? I'm gonna try it right now. <laughs> excellent. Inside of the coconut is the meat, and it's on the inside part of the coconut. And uh, the meat is excellent for protein, has three grams of protein per serving, and it also has seven grams of fiber. Fiber is another good thing for weight loss as well. And um, it just keeps your digestive system going really well, and it keeps you full. Weight loss. So I've heard you say weight loss twice. Yes. Now, you know, people tell me, go out there, coconut oil, it's, it's the new thing. So I went to, to Thrifties and bought some of this and started putting it into my husband's shake in the morning and mine. And he came to me and said, if this is so good for me, why does it say that there's 64% saturated fat in this product? And I said, I don't know, I'm gonna ask Donna, so here I am. Excellent question. Well, one of the great things about the coconut oil is the saturated fat is actually medium uh, chain triglycerides. So what that means is that it's the kind of fat that breaks down fat that's in our body. So a lot of people have started using this and having like two or three or even four tablespoons a day working up to it and they're actually dropping weight as a result of it. Hmm. Okay, um, so you're selling me more and more on this all the time. Nice. Now, I've been using this coconut oil, I've been using it on my skin, I've been, you know, and I've noticed lines are disappearing, and my skin is smooth and it, feel, it feels good. Well, you look fabulous, Lorraine. Why, thank you, and I, I didn't pay her to say that, just so you know. Um, but I do know that you're wearing a Band-Aid on your nose, and I know that you're using coconut oil to to do what? Tell us what you're doing with that Band-Aid. Actually, Under I'm super band proud of this Band-Aid because um, I had a mole and it was inflamed. And one of the excellent properties of coconut oil is it um, makes inflammation go away. So the first thing I noticed when I applied coconut oil onto this Band-Aid is within a day, the inflammation was gone. Within four days, it removed the whole uh, root of the mole and then it removed the top surface as well. It's been two weeks and right now we're just on the healing process. Wow, Yeah, good for it's you. It's so exciting. Good for you. Yeah. So you have a smoothie here today. Yes, There's do. two things that I love about food. One is that it's easy to prepare and one is that it's good for me. And from what I understand watching you prepare this, this is both. So tell me what you got in this glass. Super easy to make. I put some spinach and parsley. Green smoothies are something that we have in our home all the time. And I added some coconut water, some coconut meat, a banana, and some pineapple. Blended it up, the whole thing took less than five minutes. And drinking this makes a difference between having those curves throughout the day. Oh, those curves, I thought you meant these curves. Well, both actually, you get more curves yes. that way. And also, you, you maintain a level of energy throughout the entire day with a vitality level of what you would like to live throughout the day. Okay. Do you wanna try it out? I would love to try okay. it. Another way that we use uh, our coconut is in energy balls. We put coconut meat, coconut water, and coconut oil for a snack, and we add some raw chocolate and some date paste and a couple other ingredients, and we have this together with it. Why, thank you. Well, cheers. Cheers to coconuts. Cheers to coconuts. Okay, so thank you very much, Donna. I really appreciate you. I know that you've gone to a lot of work to prepare this today, and I thank you very much for that. Um, there's so much to learn, and, and again, thank you for being my first guest on the show here at Shaw TV. And now, as you can see, Matt, over here, I have a lovely bunch of coconuts, so I'd like to see what you have next. <laughs> Not sure if I'll be showing off my lovely bunch of coconuts quite yet, though, but I tell you, nice job, Lorraine, as we like to say. We bless Lorraine down ashore TV. A wonderful job there in your first segment, I mean, showing how we can go-go nuts for coconuts. And, you know, a lesser host may have gone bananas, but you were very palm throughout the whole thing. So, uh, of course, it helps having a very good guest with you. And as my mama and my papaya used to say, it does take two to mango. So, Key, we are just about uh, out of lime here on the show on Shaw, and John Cleese's parrot is pineappling for the fjords. That's even bad by my standards. 
pineappling for the fields. So let us know. Let's be a big thanks right now to all of our guests and all of our hardworking volunteers and staff in front of the cameras or behind the scenes. You can find Shaw TV on Facebook, Twitter, and check out previous editions of the show on YouTube. So as we send it out, and I'm going to get myself a smoothie right about now, we're going to have one more song from Mr. Matt Falvey behind me, leaving us, of course, on a very upbeat and cheery note with a song entitled Sing a Sad Song to Me. Cheers, and thank you so much for watching. This one goes out to Matt Carter. You've been drifting away I know there's something you need to say You've been singing sad, sad songs you sing them to me You've got something On your mind I can't give Any more time You keep singing so Sad songs, you sing them to me. I try each time to get away, but still I come back to you. time I run, I run back to you. Tell me something I need to hear. Say it sweet in my ear. You keep singing sad, sad songs You sing them to me I try each time to get away Still I come back something.